I've often wondered what possesses an anime distribution company here in America to pick up certain titles for release. And right now, more so than ever. Today, licensing is still a thorny issue, but it is somewhat mediated by the proliferation of streaming services. Since most anime made today is made with a global online audience in mind, licensing becomes a much more important and thoroughly vetted process. However, way back when, the business of licensing anime was a bit more tricky since oftentimes no one entity owned all of the property rights of an anime, and it often came down to intermediaries negotiating between half a dozen parties. We broached the subject before, talking about how picking up an anime for the States can often mean also having to pick up titles that fail to recoup their costs in Japan as a sort of piggyback contract situation. But sometimes, US licensors didn't care what they sold, they just needed something to sell. And I have to believe that was the case for today's subject, Space Travelers the Animation. Released by Media Blasters in 2001, Space Travelers is a single one-shot OVA. Now the phrase, the animation, should clue you in that there's another Space Travelers floating out there somewhere. Otherwise, what would be the use of the distinction? And there is. Kind of. See, there was a Japanese comedy in 2000 called Space Travelers, but the anime isn't based off the movie. Rather, it's based off a fictional anime franchise that one of the main characters is obsessed with. So much so that they adopt the personalities of the characters in the anime during a bank heist that goes wrong. It's just a weird movie, guys. But hey, at least it has Ken Watanabe in it. A couple of minutes of animation was made for the movie, but the director of the film, Katsuyuki Motohiro, apparently wrote an entire script and storyboard for this, I remind you, fictional anime. Apparently, it was all enough for Studio Media Vision to churn out a complete OVA, and I can't even begin to tell you how strange all of this is. It's almost as if Media Vision made the anime just so that Motohiro's effort wouldn't go to waste. And then, on top of all of this, Media Blasters picked it up, dubbed it, and released it for an American audience, when to this day, no official US release of the original Space Travelers exists. This is like if Japan never got an official release of Married with Children, but somehow got an official release of Psycho Dad. Space Traveler the Animation's production history is, without a doubt, the most interesting thing about the anime itself. Created on what had to be a, well, I guess they paid us, mindset, the animation is equal parts cheap, cookie cutter, and unintentionally hilarious. Honestly, it feels like something that would appear on Mystery Science Theater 3000. All space travelers were able to book any vacation. Not that one, putzes. Anyway, it is prime viewing material, especially coming off of the soul-draining Gantz. It's goofy, it's laughably uneven, it's incompetent, and it's exactly what the doctor ordered. This is Space Travelers The Animation. We begin with the setup that in the far-off future of... 038, mechanical aliens have pretty much scorched Earth. Earth has survived the dawn of a new era, only to be attacked by an unknown enemy. Now it is surrounded by a mechanical militia, and the ORS, the Orbital Ring System. They wanted to call it the Halo Array, but 343 Industries threatened to sue. Seems that all the communication has been snuffed out between Earth and the many space colonies that dot the galaxy, and only mercenaries and smugglers are daring enough to run information and goods between the blockades. One such band of dashing rogues are the Space Travelers. Must have spent weeks coming up with that name. And cue the nearly three and a half minute intro. Despite the intro being nearly 5% of the entire running time of the anime, it looks pretty great, doesn't it? The action is fast-paced and fluid, the music is soaring and majestic, and holy crap, is that guy blowing away robots while breathing in the vacuum of space? He doesn't even have a suit, he just has a white beater on as if to give the middle finger to Vulcan Raven! This is gonna be awesome! Ha! Yeah, none of that shit actually happens in the anime proper. In fact, this is the quality of animation we're actually working with. I've got a visual, Jay. Slow down. All right, then. We're going in. It's so quiet around here. I guess. God, what is the editing trying to do? Punches in the ears? Yeah, this is what the actual anime looks like. Honestly, I ask you this, 
Have you ever seen a more generic looking cast of characters in an anime before? And their ships are... Uh, well... Fisher Price Nightmares, is that the word? I mean, what in the world is going on with this ship? Is it supposed to be an intergalactic freighter? Or a limbo dance waiting to happen? And then... They start talking. He came to us because the space travelers are the best in the solar system. We'll deliver anything, anywhere, guaranteed. That's true. You are one hell of a salesman, Hoy. I'm impressed. Hell, even I would pay us to deliver a package. And I'm the damn captain. Who the hell was Disco Stew here supposed to be talking to if not the audience? Wait a minute. I know that guy. So please keep away from me. Get it? Got it? Good. I hate this! It's too hot and I'm too thirsty! <laughs> and that's the last time I will ever think about Rig Veda or Madara ever again. Unless I review Pokemon the Movie 2000. Not saying nothing, but... Well, this scene has gone on for 10 seconds. Time for a robot fight! is the feral kid from Mad Max 2 even shooting at? Apparently he and his bladed boomerang can defy the laws of physics because he's gotta be, what, a hundred feet in the air? Kid dual wheels pistols like he was playing Blood Rain blind. Wait, the samurai guy here is also floating, so this must be an anti-gravity environment. But then why are these guys affected by gravity, but these guys aren't? And I'm bringing actual science discussion into Space Travelers the Animation, why? And is it just me, or is something a bit off with the anime? Oh. Nice one, Mr. Henry! Holy crap, I'm breathing! Yeah, the anime is almost, but not quite, an hour long, and that's with a three-minute intro and credits. And it seems that still wasn't enough, so the anime resorts to frequent and awkward stalling. I swear, watching this is like perpetually feeling like you're sitting on the pause button. Then again, maybe Space Travelers is doing you a favor because you certainly wouldn't want to miss a second of its riveting action scenes. Holy dog shit, did John Woo direct this? At gunpoint? Check it out guys, generic anime heroine number 264 goes on a rampage and clears out the remaining robots while making Rambo look like Rambo, a 19th century French poet and libertine whose reputation for exquisite words is only matched by his passionate and torrid homosexual affairs. She doesn't even use the stocks as she sprays the entire room. Girl must have the forearm strength of Popeye the Sailor Man. But hey, uh, isn't there supposed to be, you know, a story happening? Yeah, seems our heroes are smugglers, and their latest mission is their most important one yet, as they need to deliver this all-too-important, uh, whatever this is, to the Earth Resistance, which will ensure humanity's last stand and survival. So, off they go! You look nervous, Mr. Henry. No, uh, not really. I trust you guys to get the cargo there on time, so don't worry about me. So, um... How you guys been? Football season's around the corner. You excited about it? I wasn't asleep. <sighs> oh, thanks for waking me up, show. What's going on? So what's the cargo? Our only hope. Hmm. Well, if you die, you can't deliver that hope, can you? That's true. Always doing me the solids, anime. And back into the fray it goes. I swear, the show should be called Pew Pew the Anime. 
Jay, the shield damage is at 80%. We're taking too many hits. Tell me something I don't know. In May of 1876, Rambo enlisted into the Dutch colonial army, but deserted and fled into the jungles of Indonesia only months into his service. Or did you already know that? Sure enough, they break through and land on Earth, where they're greeted by the welcoming committee. And to make sure the audience knows where they came from, they show us every single step. All right, it's not Jerry levels of listlessness, but this anime has more artificial filler than a goddamn Taco Bell chalupa. Speaking of filler, seems that the job has gone off without a hitch, but it was too easy. Something must be up with, uh, this beardy bloke. Beard face, yeah, let's go with that. But real pros tend to be creatures of habit. They usually don't change their ways much. Hmm, is that so? What are you saying? When the militia attacked us in the AP, he fired one shot at that robot. He shot it in the head. But Henry always fires three shots. Three always aimed at the chest. Yeah, you're right. He did just shoot once. He must be a witch! And because of this ironclad reasoning, they storm his apartment and immediately call Scroll. Did you really think the space travelers would be fooled so easily? But you were fooled. That's why you took the stupid job. Just shut up, you little brat. Huh? <laughs> Oh, God damn it, I love this shit show. So, uh, that happens. Apparently, he was an LMD the whole time, and you'd know that if you bothered to watch the beginning of the anime, but since you never see this character again... Eh? At least he went out looking like one of the Goombas from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Just gonna leave that frame up there for a bit so it can have its time to sink in. Mmm... Meanwhile, the rest of the space travelers on Earth, oh god, oh god, the enemy looked terrible before, but they're literally Brody questing across the frame. And why the hell are their heads fading into the background like Marty McFly? But yeah, it seems like this entire plot was a ploy by the Forerunners to find the rebel base and snuff it out. And they nearly do it by using another LMD, Frank. <laughs> Uh. Nice move, Waco kid. Then again, it's not like you could have shot anyone with that prop gun of yours anyway. They put him down for the count, and then all of a sudden the anime decides that the death of Frank has to be treated like the death of Mufasa, including a tearful, nostalgic montage set against flame with tender music in the background. Surely due reverence must be paid to the most important character of our story, Frank. True friendship knows no better name than Frank. Women, inconsolable. Men, gnashing their teeth in unfathomable grief for the loss. No, the soul-shattering absence of the one, the only, Frank. Even God himself must open the skies to flood the world in sorrowful tears for the loss of Frank, the universe! My body still aches from that explosion. <laughs> You're just complaining because you didn't have enough time to hide behind me. If it wasn't for the shield reactor they made, we would have been splattered all over the place. Yeah, if it wasn't for that thing we conveniently had off screen, we'd surely be goners, boy howdy. What? There's no way we can see anything from here then. Wow. 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 Seeing as how the anime uh, has to end, the story decides to peck and paw the shit out of things by having the characters form up a desperate suicidal plan where they basically pilot a missile into the Halo array after one of the characters gives the missile a pep talk. 
I know it's supposed to be that he's working on the missile, but the animation is so terrible it looks like he's trying to comfort it after it lost a peewee football game. Dear, dear missile, you get him next time. How about we go to Showbiz Pizza Place? And so the anime pulls out all the pew-pews. Friends are reunited, ships are blown up, and one of the most laughable transformation sequences in sci-fi anime history sears itself into our eye sockets. What is this? No, I'm asking you, what is this? Sweet space Jesus, I hope that thing isn't sentient, because if I looked like that and I was aware of it, I would just run to the nearest living thing and beg it to kill me. God, this is intense. Isn't it amazing how the anime got you to care about these varied, richly detailed and nuanced characters like What's-His-Face or that guy, and how can the story be anywhere near as effective and poignant without, you know... Uh, well, I'm sure I don't need to tell you her name. And when <clears throat> makes one final stab towards the Forerunners, who I assure you had plenty of scenes and were not just shown a measly two times over the course of this hour-long anime, because who does that? We are on the literal edges of our seats. Or at least Disney's lawyers are, as they're standing up to fire off their C&Ds. Just play the homage card, Space Travelers. After all, it worked for Star Chaser. And wouldn't you know it, the missile works, the halo is destroyed, and Hummins have fought for their freedom. The end. You know, I've always said that one of the perks of doing this job is finding a forgotten relic that deserves to be remembered for one reason or another. And I think I found one such example. Oh yeah, it's amateur hour through and through with some of the worst animation and character designs I've seen from a major anime studio. The story is non-existent, the action scenes are mindless, it's about as cheap as you can get, and yet... There is something lovely innocent about the whole thing. It's like someone made an anime on the cheap from a script written by a 12 year old, but in the best possible way. It's just infectious with how it plays itself out, no matter how dopey it can get. It's just fun. Yeah, at its own expense, sure, but it welcomes it. This anime is the equivalent of your childhood friend biffing it hard on a skateboard right in front of you. You feel bad for laughing until you see him laughing even harder than you are. It invites the laughter and I'm happy to play along. Pick it up if you can find it and have yourself a great bad movie night with your friends. This was simply made for it. But talking about childhood made me realize that I've yet to talk about some of the most important anime foundations of my childhood. And I really should rectify that, shouldn't I? Till next time. <laughs>